He created Spider-Man, the Hulk, the Fantastic Four, Iron Man, Thor, the X-Men, and many other fictional characters. He introduced complex naturalistic characters and a thoroughly shared universe into superhero comic books. Simply put, Stan Lee revolutionized the comic industry. As the former head of Marvel Comics, Stan Lee subsequently led the expansion of Marvel Comics from a small division of a publishing house to a large multimedia corporation. These Marvel movies are now mainstream cultural events that happen with or without the support of a niche fan base. His newest venture is to target Asian fanboys through Magic Storm Entertainment, a Hollywood-based film finance organization run by CEO Eric Baika and Stanley's POW Entertainment. The company's primary focus is to develop globally appealing Hollywood-branded Stan Lee Films franchises that appeal to audiences in China. For comic book and superhero fans, the world could not have picked a bigger cheerleader than Stan Lee. I'm here with the legendary Stan Lee and also Eric Micah, CEO of Magic Storm Entertainment. Thank you so much for being here today. You are very welcome. Can you tell me a little bit about what kind of influence um, comic books have had on you as a child? I grew up with Dick Tracy and Terry and the Pirates and other names that you probably wouldn't know. Flash Gordon you may have heard of. And I always loved stories and comics about people and things that were bigger than life, you know? Um, people who had superpowers, people who could do things that other people couldn't do. Even like Robin Hood, who could shoot a bow and arrow better than anybody else. Except me, I bought a bow and arrow years later and I was awfully good at it. When you first started to create all these superheroes, how were they received at first? Um, I'm trying to remember how the first one I did of the new so-called Marvel characters was the Fantastic Four. And it must have done very well. They must have liked it because my publisher said, Stan, do another one. And then I don't remember exactly what the order was, but then we did the Hulk and um, we did Iron Man and we did uh, the Avenger, not the Avenger, we did the X-Men and on and on. A daredevil. It was fun doing them and I, I, again, it was so long ago, they must have done well or my publisher, who was a very thrifty man, would not have wanted to publish any more of them. Are there any superheroes that you, uh, you look up to and you don't, reg that you enjoy? Besides oh, me, besides me. It should be obvious to you that I have lived up to everything that those superheroes stood for. I have tried to be honorable, courageous. I try to help people who are in trouble as long as it isn't dangerous or expensive. And um, no, it's very hard really to live like a superhero because they're all idiots. They spend their lives just helping people and they have no personal lives at all. You wouldn't want to be like that. I'm only kidding, of course. Our superheroes are different. We used to like to play up their personal lives. So the reader would feel that this character might really exist because he or she has the same problems that I have. They have to earn a living. They may not feel well one day. Maybe they have an ingrown toenail. You never know. They have to go to the doctor, a toothache. We, we try to say this person has a superpower, but besides that, he or she is a real person. Let's get to know the character. And, um, and I think I'm talking too much. For decades, audiences have found comfort even hope in superheroes. Captain America was created around World War II and others have their enduring appeals morphed to fit social mores of the time. Today, they have been translated to billions of dollars to the box office with fans rooting for them. To most people, they are all superheroes, but in different ways. So is there a common denominator? Oh, I would like to think so. First of all, 
their motivation for what they do should be clear and understandable. It shouldn't be foolish. And they all have to be basically good people. Not perfect people. I mean, it may be hard for you to believe because I am obviously so perfect, but there are people who aren't. And I think the trick is you have to come up with a character who, if he had no superpower, he or she, if they had no superpower at all, you would still want to go to the movie and see the story because that character himself or herself is so interesting. And we try to come up with that type of character. Then we add the superpower. Now, besides just being interesting, it becomes fantastic. You can't resist it. You've got to see it because you know you're going to see things you've never seen before. One of the most interesting things that uh, Stan was able to, to do in this latest film that we're creating called The Annihilator, uh, which is in many ways incredibly unique and different, and in many ways it, it goes right back to the values of what Stan has always created. When I heard how popular our, our comic books and our heroes were in China, I was really thrilled. I, I wasn't aware that they were that aware of them or that they cared that much for our characters in China. So I said, why don't we create a Chinese superhero? But not just something that will play in China, something for the whole world. Just like we think that Spider-Man and Iron Man and the Avengers are for the whole world. So. The first thing we had to do was think up somebody who'd be different, because we've done just about everything. And I kind of like the name The Annihilator. There's no character that I know of called The Annihilator. And it sort of gives you the feeling this is going to be unusual and it's going to be action-filled, which it is. But then, in order to get a character called The Annihilator, who's the hero, we had to know who is this person. And how does he get to be the Annihilator? So we found, in our imagination, a young Chinese boy, a teenager, who's really a good kid. Anybody would want to be just like him, or he, he's typical of the average Chinese young man. He's typical of the average teenager anywhere. But through a series of bad luck, things happened that were unlucky for him. And even though he was a great kid, and his mother and grandmother had imbued the Chinese philosophy in him. Because of the, the streaks of bad luck, he ended up having to leave the country. And he went to America where, again, through a series, I, I don't want to give the story away because it's quite exciting and quite gripping, but he ends up in prison in America. And he has one chance to straighten things out and that's if he would submit to a certain secret experiment that the U.S. government is conducting to try to give a human being, a person, certain superpowers. Now, this experiment is dangerous. It might kill him, but if it works, he will be set free, and he will also have powers such as no human being has ever had before. Now, that's all I can tell you, but I'm sure you can figure out we're not going to kill our hero, so he's going to end up being the Annihilator. Singer-actor Wong Lee Home is set to star in Magic Storm Entertainment's adaptation of Stan Lee's Annihilator. <laughs> Li Hom, who was born in New York, became a huge Chinese music star after entering a competition in Taiwan. He numbers more than 35 million followers on the Chinese social media network Weibo and has appeared in films including Lust Caution and most recently Black Hat. Can you tell us more about your baby, the Annihilator, from birth to conception, kind of the, the process and how it became what it is now? It has been so easy. <laughs> he pushes me around and gets whatever he wants. 
No, I think, listen, you know, yeah, China is, a, China is an, a, an amazing country. And I spent a, a great deal of time there. I just returned uh, like three weeks ago. Um, this whole new adventure of a co-production with China is very new to the Hollywood and also very new to, to, to the Chinese industry. Uh, film financing in, um, in China is very unique and very different than film financing here. So this progress this, that we have always made since its first day has taken just about three years. Uh, but we have excellent partners uh, who believed in this, in this uh, project from the beginning. Uh, we have excellent production equity, and uh, we have excellent Chinese f financiers who also, like us, it takes patience and understanding to understand both sides of the industry and to really create the very first global co-production with China. It takes, takes its time. Uh, but we're there, and we're very, very satisfied with, with our partners and those who want to be involved. So it's been announced that uh, Wang Li Hong is um, going to be cast. How did his name come about? When we first met him, I was so impressed. He looked just the way I felt that our character should look. And then when I found out he was an actor, a good actor, and also a rock star in China that could be the same as the stars of our American superhero stories. But he's perfect. I think that the American fans will love him and the European fans, certainly the Chinese fans. So I think all over the world he will be a great hero and um, I, I, we're just very fortunate that he was available, that when he heard about the movie, about the story, he got as excited about it as we are. And to me, enthusiasm is one of the most important things. If you work with somebody who's as enthusiastic about the project as you, it has a much better shot at being successful. That's what I like about him. He, <laughs> If nothing else, the guy is enthusiastic. He may not have too many other qualities, but I love his enthusiasm. Well, Wang Li Holm, to be honest, is everything that Stan said, but more importantly, he really wanted to do this. Oh, yeah. He has very similar beliefs that I do. He's grown up globally. I've grown up globally. He's lived in different countries. I've lived in different countries. And what he sees is exactly what I see. Our two countries, or the East and the West, China and the United States, must merge. We all forget our friendships that we had in the, in the 40s and, and even earlier. Uh, we concentrate too much about the problems that exist today. But the reality is, is that China and the United States have always been great partners and great friends. We rely on each other. And what we want to do from an entertainment point of view is demonstrate to the world that through entertainment, there is a great bridge, a uh, culture bridge from music to, to film, uh, television. And this is what uh, Wang Li Home has always wanted to do, and it's what we've always wanted to do. And so, again, that, that, that enthusiasm is also passionate. It's apolitical. This is about uh, entertainment and bringing at the same time what happens is the world gets just a little bit closer. I am so impressed with what you said and I agree with it so much because we're in the entertainment business but it is such a great feeling to feel that while entertaining people, while presenting movies that hopefully people enjoy seeing, we're also doing something to make people in different nations feel friendlier toward each other. Because when you enjoy something and somebody else in another country enjoys the same thing and you have the same feelings for it, that brings you closer and closer. And after a while, it makes people realize we may be from a different country, we may speak a different language, but we're really not all that different. We all cheer for the good guy and don't like the bad guy and we want justice to triumph and so forth. And by trying to get those, those ideas across in our movies, I sometimes feel, and it's a good feeling, that we're doing more than just entertaining people, but maybe in some slight way we're trying to make the world a better place.
Marvel's superhero movies have done extremely well in China. So does that put any pressure with Annihilator? How do you think that will compare with the other films that have done so well already? Well, I think there's no reason for the Annihilator not to do as well as the other Marvel movies. I had a hand in creating all of those other Marvel movies. I've created the Annihilator. I've tried to imbue the Annihilator persona and the script with the same qualities that all of the Marvel scripts have. So it's a movie that could just as well be shot in Los Angeles, in Hollywood. It's a typical superhero movie, but it just happens this time to deal with a Chinese hero and have a Chinese flavor as far as where he lived. We, we see his background, we see him in China, but it's really, to me, it's a Marvel-type movie because I did the Marvel-type movie original stories, and this one is the same type of story. And that's another reason that we're excited about it, because it seems to fit the niche of superhero-dom so perfectly. There are two things that always come to mind. Uh, some, some question has always been raised, is the world ready for a foreign superhero? Not Chinese, but foreign. The answer is really simple. The world has always had a foreign superhero. It's always been American. So the entire globe has always had a foreign superhero. So that's, not, that's never an issue. Our testing with children and, and, and adolescents and teenagers and those in their 20s who, who read, the, the comments are always the same. By the, the, by the time they're past the 10th and f or 13th page, they're into the character, not that the, the person is Chinese or not. Now, what was interesting, if years ago I saw the first uh, uh, superhero film in Beijing. The audience uh, was sparse. They didn't understand the jokes. They didn't have the uh, uh, understanding of the history of the characters. And a few weeks ago or months ago, I saw Thor that opened up in Beijing. The audience was full. Not only did they understand the history of Thor, but there's a scene in it where the character becomes three or four superheroes as he walks down the road. They knew each one. They recognized Stan. So the, the Chinese audience, which we have to remember is going to outpace the North American audience probably in a, in a year and a half, now has so quickly taken on board the Marvel history, understanding and the sense of humor. Can you imagine if their superheroes, Wang Liu Home on the screen, that the script doesn't placate to the Chinese, but reflects the re reality of what China is? This is going to be huge. It's going to be huge in China. And it's going to be just a great story around the world, and, and that's really what that's about. So we, we don't see any competition. This is only better for everybody. opened in 2008, Marvel's box office trajectory has only gone one way, up. Box office performance of Marvel superhero themed movies and television have made over 15 billion dollars worldwide. Each of the individual Marvel Studios character franchises, Iron Man, Thor and Captain America, has improved at the box office with each successive film within each respective franchise in domestic opening weekend gross, in total domestic gross, and especially in total international gross. No other superhero franchise matches that record. Do you, um, what is the vision that you guys both have for superhero films in the future? I think people, and when I say people, I mean in every country, will always love superheroes. And I think there's a reason for it. Most everybody loved fairy tales when they were young. Tales about things that are bigger than life, dragons and witches and magicians and things like that. You get older and you're too old for fairy tales, 
but I don't think you ever outgrow your love for them. Then along come superhero movies. They're really fairy tales for grown-ups because they have the same qualities, but they're more adult and a grown-up can enjoy a superhero movie as proven by the success of the Marvel superhero movies. And the Marvel movies, as um, Eric has said, are popular all over the world, including China. So the Annihilator is simply another Marvel-type movie, <clears throat> which, unlike the others, it's being produced, it's being filmed. A lot of it is being done in China, although it also takes place in the United States and elsewhere. But it's a typical superhero movie, and I think after that there will be other superhero movies and others. Hollywood is beginning to realize, it took them a long time, Marvel had to teach them for quite a while, how very popular superhero movies are. And now everybody is starting to do them. Luckily, we were there first. I think we can do them better. I think we know how they should be done. And all of the knowledge and all of the experience that we have in doing superhero movies, you will be able to see it all on exhibit in The Annihilator. How do you plan on ensuring that future generations appreciate comics and superhero movies. Are there any um, plans that you guys have in store to make sure that happens? I think the only plans are to keep doing what we're doing. And the most important thing is not to be lazy, not to just rest on your laurels. Every new hero we come up with has to be different, has to be unique, has to have some sort of a different power the way the Annihilator does, and the way the villain, I'm not going to tell you about him, but he also has a very unique superpower. As long as you come up with superpowers that are interesting, and as long as you make the story in its own way seem believable, seem credible, as though, well, this really could happen if you just suspend disbelief a little bit. If you tell yourself, somebody could be bitten by a radioactive spider and become Spider-Man. Or what happens to the Annihilator, that really could happen if you tell yourself, well, that might have happened. Then you believe it and you go along with the story. And we like to think that we know enough now about telling stories that we can tell a good story that people will enjoy and after this story there'll be new stories and new stories and that's what we do that's what we love doing that's what we've been somewhat successful at doing and we don't intend to stop here here do you agree with that eric absolutely i think uh how, how do you bring you know young young people in it's storytelling it's always about the story the script and, and the and the character, I think also what is unique about uh, this particular uh, treatment and script that Stan and Dan Gilroy created is in, in many ways it's going back to what Stan originally used to create. It's a lot about character. I hate to give our competitors too much information, <laughs> but basically, I think the trick is you have to come up with a character who. If he had no superpower, he or she, if they had no superpower at all, you would still want to go to the movie and see the story because that character himself or herself is so interesting. And we try to come up with that type of character. Then we add the superpower. Now, besides just being interesting, it becomes fantastic. You can't resist it. You've got to see it because you know you're going to see things you've never seen before. You're going to see a new type of scene, new type of combat. Everything will be different, but you also care about the character. And that's really the trick. And that's what we try to specialize in.
superhero is something very different from the action hero. It is not supernatural power that makes a superhero popular. Superheroes are symbols for something deeper, and it is this quality that allows them to remain popular and relevant no matter what time they are in. Like the gods of Greek mythology, they can be flawed. In fact, some argue that we need them to be flawed. Stan Lee said that part of their appeal is that we can relate to them, despite their being superhuman. Along the same lines, if the, if the comic book world was real and there was one superhero, which superhero would you want to be a real-life character? Can I answer that first? Yeah. I'd want to be Stan Lee. <laughs> and why? <laughs> Every woman in the world loves this guy. Only That's it. It's really no. a difficult thing for me. <laughs> it isn't easy having to say no to so many. Being Stan Lee is marvelous. He's one of the, uh, the most well-liked, respected men uh, in the world. Uh, he is well-known. He's humble. Incredibly humble. Incredibly like, shy humble. and humble. And uh, he's, quite frankly, a creative genius. And so if you put all that together, what a great life and what a great man who has been honored over and over and over. Not enough. Uh, so this is why... If I came back as a superhero, my superhero is Stan Lee, because he's really going to do something special for us, too. Well, I could never top an answer <laughs> like that. That's why I want to go first. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, I'll stick with that. Uh, I'd rather be me. <laughs> I never realized it until you said it. <laughs> now, I love all the superheroes. Maybe I'd like to be Tony Stark, Iron Man because he's very wealthy and very glamorous and the women all love him. Although, come to think of it, except for the wealthy part, I guess that's me too. Are you Stan Lee? Oh, damn. <laughs> I guess one person can make a difference. In the burgeoning new millennium, superheroes have taken over popular culture with feature films, television shows, and video games, complementing a new generation of web-based comics that bring superhero adventures to every corner of the world. Thanks to the imagination of Stan Lee, these characters will keep on saving the world. And this 93-year-old icon can't wait to have a Chinese superhero seen around the world. I want to say to anybody who might be watching this, Ni Hao! Freedom's hot. And it's a price I'm willing to pay. He told me not to trust anyone. This is how it ends. Everything goes. Looks like you're giving the orders now, Captain. I am right. 